Welcome back to another episode of Multi-Passionate Mompreneur. Today I am driving and you might hear a turn signal. You might hear some outside noise. And honestly, if you're still with me on this podcast, then you're probably used to things getting done versus being perfect. And so hopefully you can take a page from that book and just know to like when inspiration hits you, when you have something that you know you need to get out in the world and that you need to share that just doing it is better than it being perfect and packaged up with a with a nice bow. I felt like I needed to get you guys an episode, just like probably everyone else and their mom, about the new year and goals and all that. But I knew that I just didn't want it to be just like any old um, goal setting podcast episode. I knew that I wanted it to be geared around self-awareness and knowing yourself and honestly making the goals something that you can actually show up for. And so it doesn't matter the plan that you have. It doesn't matter like the the framework that anyone tells you. If you're not going to actually physically do it, then it doesn't matter. So I'm giving you permission to kind of throw out the book, so to speak, and do a little bit of pondering, of thinking, of internal work to self-reflect, to almost self-regulate and figure out what it looks like to you. So first I want to start off by saying I'm on my way back from Home Depot from doing a project. We're going to be doing, I'm going to be doing, I said we, but me, I'm going to be doing a uh, board and batten project in my entryway because I got a nail gun for Christmas and um, because I like projects. Now here's the thing that is bring the whole reason for that story is that I want you to think about the things that you have to do that we tell ourselves we have to do that are on that to-do list that maybe we don't want to do, the things that we think that we have to do, and then I want you to think about the things that you want to do. Now, I've been really looking into this whole figuring out who I am and the whole aspect of neurodiversity and ADHD and that it can be a gift and not a curse and I'm not just some squirrelpreneur. I multi-passionate is a great thing and it's not some deficit, right? In fact, that was one of my worries about even naming the podcast this because I was worried that it would be something that someone, a club no one wants to join, you know, like I don't want to put my hand up that I'm multi-passionate because that's a bad thing, okay? And so I'm here to kind of debunk that, but I want to preface it by saying do more of what you want. So what I have realized is that if I have things that I need to do, quote unquote need to do, and then I have things that I want to do, I will actually postpone or procrastinate and not even do the thing that I want to do or the thing that I need to do because I have like this need to do what I want and I'm having guilt about it or shame or something that I can't like make myself do it, right? So the way to get out of that is to put your shoes on. Yes, I say that like all the time. The power of putting your shoes on. Yes, you can wash your face or something like that too. Um, Yes, taking a shower and getting ready, that's all gravy as well. But the power of putting your shoes on is the starting, okay? So put your shoes on and do the thing that you want. The, The thing is, is we think that we don't have enough time in the day to do the things we want and the things that we quote unquote need to do. But the fact of the matter is, is if you do the thing that you want, you will get so energized that the things that you need to do will get done because you have your shoes on and you are in action. And action just seems to be one of those things that once you can get it started, it's like rolling a boulder down a hill or something, like the snow collecting or something into this giant ball, right? And if you can just get it started, then the momentum from that will be huge. So what I want you to think about is who you are. And if you're like that too, then maybe do more of what you want. So for me today, that is a project in my entryway, a board and batten project with my new nail gun, okay? Yes, there's tons of other things that I could put on the to-do list. And the thing is, is I think I'll get to some of them by doing what I want, okay? So, and then another thing I want you to think about is what is it that you're experiencing whenever you did that self-regulation, self-awareness work? Like what came up? And I want you to think about the kind of vision for, so we kind of talked about who you are. And then also I want you to think about what you want. Now, this is like one of those journaling ideas where you like write down your perfect day. And the problem with someone that's multi-passionate is the idea of doing one day on a loop 
isn't going to fit near any of my passions. I mean, it might have some, but there's just not enough time to put them all in. So I want you to kind of think about it in more general terms, which goes against everything that so many people talk about when they talk about goals. They want it to be specific. They want it to be like measurable and all these things. And that is fine. I actually have a podcast episode about that. And it's all about vision casting. And if you want to make a vision board and do all that, go back to that episode and and it's a great episode. But sometimes it's almost like we just need to get the big picture and almost give ourselves kind of three options. So, so every day you show up for those goals that you made, but you allow yourself to show up for them in different ways, but it still keeps the promise to yourself. And I think that leads back to the way that you speak to yourself. So for instance, say that I have a personal goal, physical goal to lose weight or to exercise, right? So I want to say I'm going to walk every day. Now, the green goal, like if I wake up and I am in maybe the ovulation phase or follicular, check out the cycle syncing episode if you have no clue what I'm talking about, or I'm just feeling like energized. You know, there's some days where you're just like in the zone and you're going to like conquer the world. If I'm in that, then maybe I'm going to go for a run or like a long walk, say like a mile or two, three miles, whatever. And that check that box. I showed up for myself. I completed that goal, that habit. Say the next one the next day or the next week, I am not feeling it so much. I am like, and maybe in a mood, maybe I'm on a period. I don't know. Maybe I'm tired. Maybe I'm not getting enough sleep, something. And so then what the old me would do is not do anything, right? That's where we go wrong because when we can show up for ourselves and keep a promise, it kind of builds belief and we can add layer over layer over layer to gradually show ourselves, prove to ourselves by doing it, that we can do the the bigger thing, the bigger goal. And so what that could look like is, is if you're just feeling it like ish, then maybe you still do the walk, but you don't walk as far and you let that be okay. And then maybe on the days that you're feeling real low, So we got green and then we got yellow as like the ish. And then we have the like, oh my gosh, I want to stay in bed all day. I don't want to do anything. I just want to watch Netflix and, you know, like stand under my warm blanket. I don't know. On those days, you still show up for the goal that you have. You still show up for the promise, but maybe you just make it to where you put your shoes on and you legit just go to the end of your street or something. Something to where you can still show up for it. I actually did this a while ago whenever I was would go to the YMCA. I actually had Cohen thinking that that was his school. And we were going to go to school. We went the same time every day. And on the days that I felt like awesome, I did this whole HIIT workout. I did like the hour, you know, class or I did boot camp or something. On the days that I felt ish, I might like do my own thing in the gym, you know, do some weights or cardio or whatever, like a combo. And on the days that I felt like total red zone, I would just walk and and like listen to Netflix on my phone. And and those are okay. Or maybe I or something, but it's like that act of if my goal was go to the Y X amount of times a week, then I still showed up and kept a promise to myself. So I want you to think about that when you're kind of thinking of what your perfect day is or what your um, ideal day would look like and then kind of pick out the goals out of that. Give them kind of levels so that you can let yourself kind of still show up for them, okay? And then the next one is is I want you to think about self-sabotage. Like how in the world are you going to sabotage yourself from this? And one way that you can do this is thinking about what it will cost. Like, what will it cost for me to do this goal? So if it is for me to go on a walk, because we're using that example, then I want you to think about, obviously there'll be some time involved. I live in Ohio. There might be some cold involved. (laughs) Like, what is the cost? Um, It will, what will what will I need? Like, I'll probably need Reggie to watch the kids or I'll have to bundle them up and like bring them with me. Like, what are the things that are surrounding it that could possibly sabotage it? Because on this kind of phase, you're trying to figure out like, how can I self-sabotage myself? So we have self-awareness. Um, we have the kind of self-actualization of what it is that you want and like what it would look like. And then we now have the self-sabotage. Okay. And, uh, 
I also think that the vision part of that, where you're, you're figuring out what you want, there is a big piece of self-worth in that. Like, what will you let yourself have? Like, how big will you let yourself dream, almost? And then now we have this self-sabotage piece, okay? Like, what is going to make, if you can find out and what's going to sabotage you, you can prepare for it and ultimately have greater success. And then the next one is, I want you to think about these different habits that you're going to have to kind of instill, Okay. It does work if you do it the same time every day. It works. It, it doesn't. I wouldn't get stuck on the timing of it, but more so the pattern of it. We call this, um, I believe, I don't know what book I read it from, but someone calls it the habit stacking. And that just stuck with me because if you can stack it, then your body will automatically go into that next habit once it's finished with one. So if the stack is that I come down, I drink a glass of water, then I take my vitamins, then I, you know, go and drink coffee, or do I go journal then? Do I go and put my shoes on? Do I, what is it? Do I, am I going and wash my face? Like if you can stack the habits, then it will make your brain just automatically, wouldn't it be great if we could just like go on auto and do all these things, right? All right. And then the next one that I want you guys to do is think about the mindset that is going to have to be in this, okay? And so what this is going to do is make it to where you have to kind of look at the people around you. Are you surrounding yourself with people who are going to pour into you that are going to be a light whenever you don't want to do the thing that is your goal? You know, so I want you to think about that. I also want you to think about what is this preferred future that you have and what is one little thing that can put you into that like really direction that you want to go. And I know that this is oversimplifying so much, but the fact is, is you are what you repeatedly do. So if you can build belief by showing yourself that you can keep these little promises, then why wouldn't you believe yourself when you tell yourself that you can do the big ones? So even though sometimes the little ones seem so boring and mundane, then you can kind of give yourself these outs of being able to show up on these staggered levels and then kind of protect your mindset by surrounding yourself with great people who pour into you, maybe put good words in your ears with podcasts or with books that are positive or that, and it doesn't have to all be sunshine and rainbows, but that also give you like that fill you up and you know yourself like we're doing this self work I mean you're listening to a podcast so chances are you want to be better and that brings me to my last point so everyone wants to do these specific goals and I'm all about them have them written down and everything but after my mom passed away I actually went and I started making my my goal one, the same goal every year because it was a <laughs> new year's resolution that I would actually keep and it was be better, okay? And and I think that probably will be the same thing to this year because here's the thing. If you can be better than who you were yesterday, if you can be better f- for your choices that you make for dinner than you did at breakfast, maybe if you ate a donut or the leftover red velvet cake that my sister left from Christmas, then, then that is the key because if you can just the next right step be better, then you will end up seeing that happen. And I know that there's some controversy over the whole fake it till you make it. So I'll just start saying act as if. So if you can act as if you are someone who is making the next right choice, then I think you'll start to see it and believe it. Sometimes we're headed the wrong way because we want instant gratification or this strong emotional appeal. But the fact of the matter is, it's these little things that tend to add up to bigger things. So I think that that this can give us some greater insight to kind of be emotionally neutral over the things that we want to do um, and just realize it's just a behavior. So it's kind of training our bodies to know what the next step is and maybe even acting on it before we can let our brains kind of keep us safe and uh, in the way of sabotaging us, right? So I want you to kind of use a couple self-regulation tips in the way of thinking about become self-aware of where you're at right now, look at where you're headed, who has gone ahead of you and have what you have, what is their outcome, and then who is with me? I am someone who brings people along with me 
so that I have the accountability, so that I can step into the identity of knowing who I am and that I can help other people. It brings out that. So when an eight is in a positive, when an Enneagram eight is in a positive, um, healthy kind of way, they turn into kind of these positive traits of a two. And if I can bring out that helper role that is so great, that the good things of the helper, then I know that that will be just overall positive for me. And then, of course, listen to people that love you. Surround yourself with them. And just remember that I am rooting for you and I can't wait to see you succeed. Come on over to Multipassionate Mompreneur on Facebook. I would love to see what your goals are. And if you guys want to make that vision board with these things in mind, I think that that's a great idea. Let's kind of do it together. All right. I'll see you on, on, I guess I'll see you next year. (laughs) All right, guys. Hope you had a great holiday and see you next year.